Hello there, I'm just checking my volume levels. Seem to be okay. Yes, they are. Um, yes, I'm Black Bite, and if you're just visiting my channel for the first time, I tend to talk about a variety of topics. Sometimes it's to do with legislation, sometimes it's just to simplify legislation and share information. If I see new um, legislation come out or new rules, I tend to comment about it. And the underlying theme is that for people who may not ordinarily have access to certain information, I like to allow them to be aware of what's going on because it's these same people who are vulnerable and who may not um, know where to find the information. Not all information affects every one of my, um, my subscribers. Um, I, I have kind of specialist areas and so I guess certain subscribers like some of the stuff I do and other subscribers like other stuff I do. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about the e-privacy, the new e-privacy regulations, which affect everyone, every single one of us. Um, that is because um, they're supposed to be coming out at the, before the end of 2019. Um, they work alongside the GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulations. And for those of you who have small businesses, you may, and even if you don't actually, um, last year, I think it was the 25th of May, just, well, it was just under, just over a year ago, um, we were all getting those emails saying, oh, can we use your email address? Can we keep your email address? The EU regulation came out and businesses were all going crazy and there was insurance policies being sold and everyone was going berserk when this GDPR came out. But basically it was to protect data, protect client information. And so they set out some regulations on how to protect. And one of them was about the um, email addresses. Sometimes you'll give somebody an email address and they'll keep it when long before, long after the use of that email address has expired. So this was just to make sure that people who kept other people's email addresses were entitled to do so and that the owner of the email address knew that you had it. Now, let's get back to e-privacy, which is also along the same lines, only it's a much more specific and it actually protects the individual every single step of the interaction. I believe that's the reason why they're doing that double authentication so they can get by all of those steps um, that they're going to have to follow before the end of 2019. I think it's also why they're putting the biometrics and the facial recognition in place now, because after that, you know, our human rights are going to be tampered with. So it won't be so easy to get these policies through after these um, after they've been enforced. So that's why I think they're doing them all now. Anyway. Let me tell you what this e-privacy policy is all about. Well, I've already told you it's coming out before the end of 2019. It has been approved by the EU Council. So it just has some fine tuning to do and then they're going to go ahead with it. So the e-privacy will replace the e-privacy directive. Um, while GDPR that is the um, General Data Protection Regulations. So I will be calling it GDPR from now on. Um, while GDPR's protection of data is more general, e-privacy makes it a legal requirement for privacy to be protected at every stage of an online interaction. Um, UK cookie law is also changing and we need our consent. Now, at the moment, when you see, you'll see those little things that pop up at the bottom of your computer or the top of your computer asking you to accept cookies and you'll either put an X or you'll either click on it or you'll either just ignore it and, make, and it goes away in the end. I think what will happen under the new cookie legislation is that it will be more specific you'll actually have to respond and say, I do not want this cookie to follow me about on the web or whatever it asks you to do. But it will be more specific when it does come out. 
Um, the e-privacy is due to come into force before the end of 2019, when I mentioned that before. The latest draft has been approved by the EU Council. I mentioned that before. E-privacy will align different online privacy rules across EU member states. I'm not sure how that affects us, if it will when we leave the EU or whatever, or whether it's still integral in our laws. I don't know if it's gonna, we're gonna have to abide by it anyway. Um, it will work alongside GDPR, which I already mentioned. E-privacy is concerned with digital practices and covers areas like online marketing, cookies and con confidentiality. E-privacy adds specific requirements around a person's private life. You see, GDPR was a bit more general. This is specific. Um, and note, and if there is any breach of data, you know, sometimes we can, um, we, I, I don't know if we still have faxes. I haven't seen a fax for a while. But you know, if you send, if you was working, say, for, in a doctor's office and you happen to send a fax, you put the wrong digit in and that fax went to the wrong place and it had personal identification, i.e. the name, the address, the NHS number, the date of birth, and it went to the wrong fax number. That would be a serious data breach and it would have to be reported to the Information Commissioner's Office. Mandatory. That even happens, you know, sometimes if you're sending an email. Somebody sent you an email and you think to yourself, oh my God, I need to copy in so-and-so. So you copy in so-and-so and you forget that the initial um, email that was sent to you has nothing to do with a third party. It contains personal information and you are now copying in a third party. That is considered a serious um, data breach. So it's so important to be on your toes. Now, for um, some of you, this may be relevant, it may be not, but you know, for some of you who may have some small business, I'm just going to tell you about the common mistakes with regard to breaching GDPR, which is the general data protection regulations. Um, common GDPR mistakes are do not allow staff to use their own computers for work purposes. Now, what sometimes happens, especially in small businesses, you've got your laptop, you think, OK, I need to bring it to work. I'm going to do some I'm going to do some of my own stuff in my lunch break. And, you know, I might even do some um, work practices. You use your um, own laptop and you do work related in stuff on your on your laptop or even on your phone. That is a data breach because that information on your laptop is not encrypted. You're not allowed to do that. Another common mistake is keep people didn't keep visitors books. Now, um, you need to keep, if you've got a small business, you need to keep a visitor's book. You know when you have um, people, sometimes you have people wandering around and you can assume that they're working on something they could, you think that they're going to install, if they've got an overall, they could be installing a boiler. But you don't ask them any questions. You just assume, especially in large organisations, you see people walking around all the time. Me, I stop them and I say, can I see your ID, please? And they look at me as though, who the hell do you think you are? I'm like, your ID? Because you don't know who these people are. Now, When if you have a, a visitor's book, um it kind of negates all of that because you can, you know the person who's in the building. If something does go horribly wrong or they are a spy or something and they've taken some of your data, you more or less know who's in the building or who came in the building and what time they left. So that's the importance of having a visitor's, um, a visitor's book. Um, what else? Paper diaries. That can t sometimes people, you know, you work in a health organisation, for example. A lot of people, they can't be bothered to go into their um, secure email address and get patient information. So what they do is they think, oh, you know, I'm just going to pop down so-and-so. I'm not living too far. They put their, the details into a paper diary. Now, 
that's fine if it's safe and you have it locked up at night and you you keep you do, you do not lose it but god forbid you lose that that's another serious data breach it is much more safer to use the online secure email address um i think some councils or some organization use egress that's a secure and it's free it's a secure way of sending information you just set up an account very very simple with your email address bob's your uncle that's it um i think um borough councils to have the gcsx at the end that means you're emailing to a secure encrypted network and i, I think with the health service they have nhs.net at the end which means that you are sending information securely these are little things that you need to know when you're sending information that's got somebody's email address date of birth mailing address um stuff like that okay um, what else is there? Printing sponsorship forms. Now, you know, like when you're collecting money for sponsorships and then, you know, it goes around and you want people to sponsor you. But you'll notice that people, because they want to collect the money, it's got people's name and address on it. Sometimes their telephone number. That is prohibited. You're not supposed to do that. If you, you just have some initials and a telephone number, but not the full address or the contact number that's not supposed to happen um disposing of paper records yeah if you've got paper records with people's names and addresses on it you know you work in a shop and somebody writes down some details because they want you to send them an order that should either be locked up um, put away or if you've used it you've sent off the order you don't need it anymore for any record keeping that's supposed to be shredded it's not supposed to be lurking around so somebody else can see it. Have you ever been, that's another thing, have you ever been to um, a doctor's surgery? And when you go to the doctor's surgery, they go, what's your name then, love? And, you know, you're looking around. Okay, it's, um, say, for example, it's Black Bride. And where do you live? And they say, what did you say? And they say it out loud. Now it's your date of birth. And the whole bloody surgery knows your name, your address, your date of birth. That is a breach. They're not supposed to do that. I mean, if you want, you can actually go in there with a piece of paper, write your name, your address and your date of birth and give it to them. But they're not supposed to say your personal information so loud so that, you know, if somebody was stalking you, if somebody did want to know where you live or how old you were, you know, they know it just by standing behind you. I've always had a beef about that. And no matter how low and quiet you talk, they're still giving it with some. Anyway, I'm, I'm straying from the point. Uh, well, not really. It's relevant. Um, making... Uh, I said about the vaccine, data breach, and I've said about that. So that's a mainly, um, those are the key things that you need to be concerned about. Um, yeah, so this e-privacy law is probably going to be in favour of many of us. But there again, like I said, we're an open book these days. Because like Wi-Fi is now tracking us, our phones are tracking us, you know, biometrics are tracking us. Like, you know, a lot, for the majority of us, it you, who gives a hoop? But it's about knowing what's happening. I mean, we kind of find out by default. We find out through videos like this, and, you know, that, you know, you're being watched, and they, they haven't got permission to do things, you know, they're scanning our passports, they're doing all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, it's just about being aware of it. And I'm sure that, you know, there are some people who really would have an issue with knowing that, you know, they're being monitored and tracked and all that kind of stuff. And that's all for now. Bye bye.